So First Solar currently makes uh, uh, the world's most efficient thin film module. It's uh, a cadmium telluride based technology which is a cadmium telluride cadmium sulfide semiconductor. Uh, in contrast to crystal and silicon devices that uh, you may see with the blue color, ours are a dark, uniform, uh, uh, aesthetically pleasing color. We call it our first solar series 3 black plus. Um, they have a variety of advantages over typical crystal and silicon modules and uh, I'll just highlight a few of those quickly. Uh, first of all, and, and most importantly, and I'll talk about in a moment, is their temperature advantage. It's a key advantage of thin film devices versus crystal and silicon. They process heat better. Uh, just like a computer, when a computer heats up, when you're saving a file, you hear the fan turn on, that's because they're semiconductors and they need to get rid of that heat to maintain efficiency. Solar cells, all our semiconductors, they do the same process out in the field. When the sunlight shines on them, they get hot and they, they, their efficiency drops. And how much their efficiency drops depends on the type of technology that, that you're using, the type of semiconductor. And, and particularly for this region in the world, a uh, solar module that, um, handles the, that handles temperature better is, is preferable. So really the three things I'd like to just talk about are energy yield, uh, reliability. Reliability is becoming such an uh, important uh, subject for solar modules. As the cost comes down in PV, it's, it's easy for module manufacturers to cut costs to, to get to that, put, that price point where uh, the market is trending to. And First Solar believes that's, that's the wrong trend. Uh, the trend is to provide a reliable technology that lasts the, the, the time that PV systems are expected to operate, 25, 30 years in the field. So we produce a solar module through an innovative process. We actually, uh, this is all done inside an atomic film deposition equipment where a sheet of glass comes in and out comes a finished solar module all in one process. Uh, it's totally automated. We deposit the semiconductor films, cadmium sulfide first, then cadmium telluride. Then we do a series of laser, monolith it's called monolithic integration, where laser scribes actually uh, isolate different cells on the sheet of glass, they isolate the semiconductor, and then certain lasers are tuned so that they don't cut all the way through, they just go part way through, and then we can fill those voids with either insulators or conductors. And those insulators and conductors make the integration of one cell to the next on the module. And you see here, we'll make the last scribe, it's called the isolation scribe. We isolate the back contact of the solar cell. And this is essentially the same process that crystalline cells do by stringing and tabbing them together. We take one cell and connect it to the next and solder it. We do that all through lasers and, and, uh, and a, uh, a completely automated process. We finish that off by encapsulating it and uh, uh, laminating the module, just two sheets of glass together. It's like an automotive windshield, a very strong, durable structure. Uh, so this is the basis of all our technology, and it's uh, essentially, it's pretty similar to a lot of thin films you see out there, so hopefully a good visualization. Uh, but I'll just break here for a second, and you'll see the inside and how this actually works. So now it's, it's in the field, and when we zoom in to the semiconductor, you actually see the flow of electricity from one cell. It can't go this way because there's a break, and then it goes down to the next, and that makes a, that builds the voltage up, right? So our solar modules are about 60 volts per module, and, and that's done by having uh, hundreds of cells inside the module to make that connection. So where are we in terms of device efficiency? So First Solar is a world record holder in, uh, in cadmium telluride uh, efficiency uh, because of our uh, uh, recent acquisition of uh, General Electric's portfolio. So we've been playing a little bit of a cat and mouse game with GE for a while uh, over the last few years on, uh, on, on cadmium telluride world record efficiency and, and recently we just said, uh, well, if you can't beat them, join them and we just acquired their IP for, for all of that and we work together now to develop that further trend that's happening in this technology right now. We are, are driving the efficiency of, that, of CADTEL far far faster than any other PV technology out there. It's unrivaled right now in the industry. And just to point out, right, the world record for multi-crystalline silicon, which is the most dominant PV technology in the world, right, was achieved in 2004, and we're knocking on the door of that now. So, so they haven't, think of the billions of dollars in, in research and development that's gone into solar um, uh, crystalline silicon. And by the way, monocrystalline silicon, the world record was in 1999. Right, so think of the billions of dollars of research and development and they haven't moved the efficiency point a tenth of a percent in a decade. 
and look at what we're doing just in the last few years. So it's something that's pretty impressive, and we think the trend is only going to continue to grow. We uh, have currently hold the world record for the most efficient thin film module in the world. That's 16.1%. That's full area module. Uh, certified by our, our records are certified by the National Renewable Energy Lab, so not just self-claimed uh, records. So here I'd just like to point out just a few things about that temperature. Why a 16.1% efficient cadmium telluride module is actually more um, uh, valuable in the field than a 16.1% crystalline silicon. So all solar modules are rated at uh, what's called STC, standard test conditions. That's 25 degrees C, uh, 1.5 atmosphere, and uh, 1,000 watts per square meter. That is a actually very unrealistic condition for solar modules to operate in. It's a very set point, but it's how all solar modules can say, you know, we, ha we have to have a, a, you know, a rating, right? It's like an SAE horsepower or something like that, some sort of standardized metric. Unfortunately, it just doesn't translate to the field very well. And as you can see from this graph, so if solar modules are rated at 25C, they're operating, you know, anywhere average operating temperature is 50 to 70 degrees in, in, in hot climates. Again, remember when I talked to you about that re reduction in efficiency and how different um, solar technologies are uh, process temperature differently. That's the big change here is that first solar modules degrade at about half the rate uh, under temperature as, as crystal and silicon. And that really drives a, a, a significant difference in terms of um, uh, actual energy yields in the field. So you can see sort of just a, a quick course of a, of a day where the difference between the two technologies, and, and you can see module temperatures routinely get into 60, 65, 70, 72, 73, we see 75 degrees C in the field, and that actually yields 9% more energy just on a given day. And these are two nameplate rated modules, the same exact output capacity on the label. So you bought them, you paid a price per watt, you got two identical amounts of watts you thought, amount of kilowatt hours you, you, you generated is quite different. And looking at data, right, this we have a lot of, you know, First Solar operates a, a, a variety, a, a huge amount of PV systems. Um, we have hundreds of megawatts under continuous monitoring and operation and maintenance. Here's some data from one of those sites, actually showing the uh, a histogram of temperature as a function of, of energy generation, uh, back of module temperature and percent of total energy uh, operated under that temperature. You can see the point where they're rated is right at the end of the curve, right? If, if, you, if we were all sitting in this room and said, where should we rate solar modules, we'd probably all pick some point maybe right there. Unfortunately, it's just um, uh, the, the historical facts of, of solar module manufacturing that preclude that, uh, but really you can see from the graphs on the right, over 90% of generation happens above that rated temperature, and over 60% of it happens above 45C, where our cadmium telluride devices have a, uh, approximately a 5% 5, 5 advantage. So when we look at the efficiency roadmaps of our technology versus crystal and silicon, at first base, they look, you know, wow, yeah, it looks like still far out in the future where thin film is going to be catching up, that balance of system penalty we all hear about. When you adjust it for temperature, we're actually in, in it, it, right at the, at, the, at the inflection point right now. And it's, it's a critical thing to note that the operating conditions of PV plants is critical to understanding their value. So uh, just uh, another point here is that reliability is a big issue. Um, the standard module certifications were intended to be a infant mortality qualification procedure. Unfortunately, uh, they've been taken by uh, investors as a, you know, uh, a guarantee somehow of performance for the life of a 25-year electronic component that's exposed to rain and sandstorms and hail and all of this stuff where they just do some simple uh, uh, laboratory tests. What the industry is evolving, and, and First Solar is a, is, a, is a big supporter, is to focus on these tests that, that accurately uh, resemble real lifetimes in the field, harsher climates, multiples of the initial qualification, and um, uh, get, you know, really demonstrating that we're the first thin film module to ever pass the long-term sequential and the pressure test. Uh, we're one of only five modules in the world to have passed uh, some of these long-term sequentials. There are over six months of, of environmental testing. Temperatures like 85C, 85% relative humidity for thousands of hours. These are extreme harsh conditions and something that uh, um, you know, very few module manufacturers can be Not only take it to the level that the independent tests are, are starting to develop, and, and again, we're a proponent of that, we actually take our testing beyond that. 
we'll take it to, here's, here's, here's data showing 6,500 hours of 85C, 85% relative humidity with very little power drop, about 5%. That's stupendous performance. I mean, you, if you think of the climate here and, and, and how solar panels will be exposed in, in areas like the Middle East, India, you know, very hot, humid places, you want to make sure that the module package, that the, the actual components that seal it all up, hold up over time. Here on, on reliability is demonstrating some of the, uh, the testing that we actually do in-house. We have a reliability center at all of our factories. Here's one of them. Uh, we'll show you some of the cool tests that uh, solar module manufacturers get to do and, and how our panels perform. We have hundreds of environmental chambers, each of them hold over 50 modules. So we, we actually destructively test over 5 megawatts of solar modules every year. There's a chamber opening up, uh, you can see high, high temperatures. Here's solar modules, we do dynamic testing, we do this over 10,000 times. Flexing the glass, it's incredible how flexible it is. This you know, demonstrates its ability to handle windstorms. That's a 45 kilogram bag. Uh, pretty heavy, golf ball sized tail, we shoot at 100 kilometers per hour in 11 different spots on the module. Um, it's, that's one of my favorite tests and fun tests to watch. Um, it happens pretty quick, so we use slow-mo cameras. We actually have this process totally automated. It's unlike any other manufacturer. We do all of these tests because you have to actually measure the performance of the module before you put it into that uh, destructive test and then after. So this robot, uh, we actually named it Fast Eddie because it replaced a guy who retired. His name was Eddie and he, uh, he, he wasn't the fastest guy in the world. But that now, now we, we totally have the process automated and uh, it, it really is allowing us to take reliability to the next level. And it's really the only way to do it is by doing a massive amount of testing on your product, and, and that capability and capacity is something that uh, we're very proud of. So, I'm Nick Strebel, Technical Manager for First Solar. I'm responsible for the communication of our, our technology. Uh, thanks. You just gave a great 15-minute presentation we'll highlight in another article, um, but there's one chart that you presented that was really interesting on uh, efficiency trends between conventional PV and thin film. Uh, with a sort of pretty critical crossover, it seems like happening in 2014 or 2015. Could you speak about that a little more? I think we're right at the precipice right now where when you evaluate PV technologies uh, under real-world conditions, um, whereas all solar modules are rated at standard test conditions at 1,000 watts per square meter, 25 degrees C, um, Real-world temperatures experience module temperatures of, of 60C, 65C, even up to 70C. Uh, and, and at that point, solar modules all lose efficiency, and they all operate at a depressed operation point. And because of that, it's important to understand the real-world operating conditions of solar modules. And we presented a graph that shows our efficiency roadmap uh, at standard test conditions compared to crystalline silicon, and then adjusting that for real-world operating conditions, and it shows that the pace of our uh, technology advancement is accelerating at such a point where, when considering the, the real-world operating temperatures, uh, the crossover point, that inflection point, is, is in the 2014-2015 time period. So it's a very exciting time.